welcome to On This Day in Tudor History with me, Claire Ridgway, author of On This Day in Tudor History. Now, today's On This Day in History is actually in the Stuart period, the 9th of May 1657, for that's the day when William Bradford died. Now, William Bradford is known as the founder of the Plymouth Colony in America, and he was born in England in the reign of Queen Elizabeth I, hence my mention of him in these On This Day talks. So let me tell you a bit more about this Tudor and Stuart man. Well, we don't know his exact birth date, but Bradford was baptised in Austerfield in the West Riding of Yorkshire on the 19th of March 1590, and baptisms usually took place within a few days of birth. He was the only son of William Bradford and his wife Alice Hansen. During his early childhood, he sadly lost his father, grandfather and mother, so was brought up by his paternal uncles, Robert and Thomas, who were farmers. Although there's no record of him attending university, he clearly had some education, as he knew Latin, Greek, Dutch and French, and went on to learn Hebrew. During his youth, he was influenced by Puritan ministers Richard Clifton and John Robinson, and William Brewster, in whose home the Scrooby Separatist Puritan congregation Bradford was a part of, met. Brewster and Bradford became good friends, with Brewster acting as Bradford's mentor. Things became difficult for the Scrooby congregation after the accession of King James I in 1603, for James wanted to suppress the Puritan movement, and in 1607, members of the congregation were arrested. Some were imprisoned, and Brewster was fined. This, combined with the treatment of other Puritans in England, led to the congregation making the decision to leave England for the Dutch Republic, where there was religious freedom due to a truce with Spain. Unfortunately, on their first attempt to cross to the Netherlands, they were betrayed by the ship's captain, and Bradford was one of those who was imprisoned for a time. They then made a plan to split into groups to travel, and by the summer of 1608, they'd all reached Amsterdam. In 1609, they moved to Leiden, where Bradford lived with Brewster and his family and worked as a fustian weaver. In 1613, he married 16-year-old Dorothy May, who came originally from Cambridgeshire, but whose family had settled in Amsterdam. They had their first child, John, in 1617. In 1611, when Bradford turned 21, he came into his inheritance and sold his property in England to buy a property in Leiden and also invest in his business. 1621 was the year that the truce with Spain was due to expire and there was concern among the separatists that their children were being negatively influenced by their Dutch neighbours. So, in 1617, Bradford and other members of his church began to look into leaving the Netherlands and establishing a colony in North America. In 1619, Bradford sold his home and the would-be colonists arranged backing from English merchant adventurers. In July 1620, around 50 separatists, or pilgrims as Bradford called them, sailed from the Dutch port of Delftshaven on board the Speedwell, bound for Southampton. There they met up with a bigger ship, the Mayflower, which, along with the Speedwell, was going to take the pilgrims across the Atlantic to North America. However, there were problems with the Speedwell, and the group eventually left aboard the Mayflower from Dartmouth on the 6th of September 1620. Bradford and Dorothy left their son John behind, but he joined his father in America seven years later. On the 11th of November 1620, the Mayflower anchored at what is now Provincetown Harbour on Cape Cod, Massachusetts. On the same day, Bradford and 40 other men signed the Mayflower Compact, the first governing document of the Plymouth Colony. Sadly, 
Bradford's wife, Dorothy, drowned after falling overboard shortly after their arrival and while Bradford was off exploring the new land. On the 15th of December 1620, after explorations of the area, the Mayflower landed at Plymouth. The colonists were struck by a sickness their first winter and spring. Bradford was taken ill but survived but in April 1621, the colony's first governor, John Carver, died and Bradford was chosen to replace him. The colonists were helped with their farming efforts by the local Native American Indians, who also helped them with establishing relations with other Indian groups. Bradford's biographer, Sergeant Bush Jr, notes that Bradford followed a policy of seeking peaceful relations with the neighboring American Indians Throughout his career, he enforced a strict policy requiring that all land must be purchased before it could be settled. When an Indian man was murdered in 1638, Bradford ensured that the three Englishmen responsible were tried and executed. In 1623, Bradford married his second wife, widow Alice Carpenter Southerth, who he'd known in Leiden and who he'd invited to join the colonists in Plymouth. They had two sons and a daughter together. The colony put its trust in Isaac Allerton, who, in seeking personal profit, brought the colony into debt, and Allerton had to be dismissed. Although in 1630 Bradford was named by patent as the colony's owner, he signed his privileges away to all of the free men of the colony. As well as being the founder of the Plymouth Colony, Bradford is also known for Of Plymouth Plantation, his chronicle of the founding of the colony and its early years, which runs until 1646, and which is described by Sergeant Bush Jr. as the fullest history of early American colonial experience. William Bradford died on this day in history, the 9th of May 1657 in Plymouth and was laid to rest on Burial Hill in Plymouth. I'll give you a link to read Bradford's history of the Plymouth plantation as it makes for very interesting reading. Also on this day in history, the 9th of May 1509, the remains of King Henry VII were taken to St Paul's to prepare for his burial at Westminster Abbey and you can find out more in last year's video, which I'll give you a link to. And on this day in 1536, King Henry VIII wanted an update on the investigation into his second wife, Queen Anne Boleyn. Find out more in the video for the 9th of May, 1536, which I'll also give you a link to. You can subscribe to this channel and please do by clicking round about there. You can hit the bell to be notified as these videos go live. You can give me a like and leave a comment. But what I really want to say today is to keep safe and well in these very strangest of times. Take care, bye bye.